awesome. A little fishing rod update. Thought it would be worth um, going through a bit more of the ramps detail. Um, the 3D printer. So it started life as a, a, C, a CTC printer, and um, yeah, basically I knackered the control board, um, so I'm changing it, make it better. Uh, replacing the control board with one of these uh, open source ramp uh, ramps boards uh, with a little uh, Arduino Mega underneath it, which is great. It seems to be working good now. Really pleased with it. It wasn't very expensive either, like the uh, the ramps board, the controllers, the the display. It was all like thirty-five pounds, so it was pretty inexpensive. Um, so the setup, uh, powering the um, the Arduino, so you can power it when it's not plugged into USB. Mm -hmm. It just comes in through a little um, buck converter. So the CTC is twenty-four volts. So that's all twenty-four volt power supply from the mains through twenty-four volts, and then output from that to power the Arduino and the ramps, uh, the logic side, uh, comes through this little switch mode converter set to five volts. And then the output from that uh, goes to ground um, and also to VCC on the ramps board. And then you need to remove the diode one here, else the um, it will try and power it as well through the onboard voltage regulator on the Arduino Mega, which uh, might make a conflict. Um, and this is the uh, buck converter that drives the um, supplies power for the stepper motors. So it comes from 24 volts through this, that step down to 17.5 volts. Um, just 17.5 um, because the, the wiki page for the ramps board reckons that you should only power the ramps or the stepper drivers with uh, a maximum of half of the um, capacitor rating. So that's a 35 volt capacitor, so I've just gone for half of that, 17.5 volts. Um, to stop things being overpowered I guess there must be spike voltages or something. Um, and then setting up the uh, the voltage for the uh, drivers. So these are the DRV 8825s. One of my mistakes was uh, uh, trying to jam a crocodile clip into one of those ground connections. Uh, the ground connection for the multimeter so I recommend uh, you know just a little, uh, little pin header thing. So you've got a ground that doesn't uh, Short out to the 5 volt supply next to it and knack it on Arduino. And then to, uh, you can see this, just about see this. Um, so set the voltage across this potentiometer. There's a tiny little pot on the, on the driver board. You need to probe the centre pin of the um, potentiometer and then twiddle it. Apparently you're not meant to use a metal screwdriver but I haven't found anything plasticky that works um, so I just use a little micro screwdriver hasn't hasn't released the smoke yet and then that's X, Y and Z stepper drivers and then there's extruder 1 and extruder 2 or extruder 0 and extruder 1 uh, the X and Y voltages are set to a, a 0 0.53 volts the Z stepper voltage reference is 0 0.3 volts, 36, and then the extruder reference voltage is set a bit higher at 0 0.76 volts. Um, so I have uh, the um, the reference voltage is proportional to the uh, the current is directly proportional, so it's twice. Twice the the voltage equals the current that's given to the stepper motors. Um, I think the stepper motors were standard. Um, just plugged in the standard cable. Um, a lot of the ends I just cut off and put on little pin headers and then hot knotted the ends to try and uh, a bit of strain relief to stop the because um, obviously where the um, the wire is uh, soldered onto the pin headers. Um, the the break very easily, so a bit of hot glue in in uh, on the over the solder connection means it doesn't snap quite so quickly. Or you could get a nice little point one inch crimp tool and crimp your own little connectors on the end of the the stepper leads. And then for these three, um, it's actually 
the signal that would have drive these uh, FETs, but I didn't know how they were driving them and whether or not they were going to heat up if I supplied them with 24 volts. Um, so I just took the signal that's going to these FETs to drive the two hot ends and the um, build plate, which I think is pin 8, 9 and 10, and then just soldered a little uh, pin header directly onto the pins, and then made up a cable that connects that through to my little opto-isolator board here. There's lots of good uh, YouTube videos on how to set up an opto-isolator, but basically it's just uh, uh, an LED that shines, uh, the light jumps a gap and activates a photo transistor. And then you just need a, a current limiting resistor um, to power up the LED. And then on the other side I've just got a end channel fat uh, going. Uh, 24 volts comes in through the photo transistor, the fat's on the low side. And then <coughs> the output from the transistor goes through the gate and the potential difference between there and ground is what turns on the FET um, so it's getting like 24 volts to turn it on which is plenty, there's a good foot air so the FET's fully on, it doesn't heat up too much which is awesome um, and I also added a little LED on each of the each of the outputs from the FETs I think, no, from the phototransistor to um, make sure that, yeah just to indicate when it was on handy for troubleshooting shooting and stuff. Um, that's the, uh, the boost converter for the uh, uh, build plate, because the build plate was taking ages to heat up and wasn't actually able to heat above like 80 degrees. Um, so I just stepped the voltage up so the, <coughs> so the power going to the build plate is higher. Um, yeah, and that's just switched. Uh, the input to that switched. Make sure you don't turn on the, the, the bed PID so it's not switching on and off all the time. Which would probably upset that. And then just a little, uh, another DC converter for the um, LED uh, inside, just so I can see how the printer's running. Uh, it can illuminate the build plate and stuff. Um, just set to way low. And then that's mounted on a heat sink. Um, just for a bit of light in the build area. Um, and then some more connections. Um, so the stepper connections all come off next to the stepper drivers and then the thermistors come in here uh, which is like hot end build plate hot end as I can see um, and then the uh, ramp board didn't work at all, didn't drive anything didn't move without the input from the uh, thermistors um, uh, and also it didn't work without the end stops, so I need to put this and stops on, which is just uh, uh, positive supply, ground, and a signal. Uh, and go to the end stops. Can't remember if they're uh, inverted or not. And then putting jumpers on. So it's uh, like I think this is how it works: X, Y, and Z. X uh, minimum, X maximum, Y minimum, Y minimum, uh, maximum. Z uh, minimum and Z maximum, and then you need to put a jumper across um, the outside two pins on the maximums, and then it just uh, software limits the maximum so it doesn't crash into the end of the printer. And then that's the hot end. Recommend getting one of these a little uh, infrared thermometer really useful to um, to set the voltage on the uh, um, just turn my camera up, you know there you go ha ha that work? yeah, that works um, uh, so I changed the um, thermistor on the on the build plate because the one that came with it, the CTC one, was the wrong so I got a uh, 100k negative temperature coefficient little uh, glass bead thermistor and just need to unscrew the, uh, the connection off the back of the board drop it down and solder in a new one and there was also a, a resistor in there so just bypass the resistor so that the two outputs from the thermistor two sides of it just go straight back to the board um, there was LEDs on there but they seem to have turned black and released the smoke since I fed it with uh, 40 volts 
might be worth taking them off before you do that, if you want to do that. Um, printed off a little case for the uh, uh, for the LCD. So it just kind of clips, clips in there. I'll put the uh, SDL, uh, SDL files in the in the description. Um, I had a bit of a problem with the, <laughs> the SD card location. I think I fixed it, but I didn't bother printing it off again. Um, and then in these hot ends are for uh, the Replicator um, 2. They are 2x. I got like, the whole module like, with the, the fans and the steppers and stuff and the hot ends for like 70 pounds. Probably didn't need to do that. I could have, like, my problem was I was trying to print rubber and the rubber wouldn't go through these standard connections that came with the CTC printer. It really needs the, um, the spring loaded finger to hold the filament against the feed roller. Um, still not working, even with these. <laughs> it's kind of balling up inside. I need to do some, uh, some more filament guys, I think, and turn the uh, print speed down, the extrusion speed down again. But anyway, um, yeah, so these, um, I think they're 20, uh, 12 volts. <laughs> so the fans and the, the heaters are, are 24 volts, uh, 12 volts. So they were, on, they were on a bit much. So I need, that's why I need to turn the, the PID bang bang uh, down. It's the settings and the, the firmware so that it never really switched on the heaters fully because they were drawing way too much current because they were meant for a lower voltage supply. Um, but yeah, if you're turning a CTC printer into a replicator, you'll need yeah, you'll have the 24 volts, and that'll be fine. Your your uh, your PID bang bang, which is just the, the the most when it's when it's on full power, the most current it'll send to uh, anything, uh, and then the hot end, the heat is um, just turns the current down, and so you can probably have that higher. Um, <coughs> All right, and you also need to get some th thermistors because the uh, CTC printer used thermocouples, which are, I think, a bad idea. Because they seem to be um, so the cave type thermocouples. They just have like an aluminium, some kind of alloy, and copper running together, and uh, they're just solid stranded. And because the printer head moves so much, these wires will eventually break and then you need to get a new thermocouple. Uh, so a great improvement is the thermistor and the ramps board on actually only has thermistor inputs. Yeah, the replicator only has thermistor inputs. Uh, so you need to get a thermistor and then it's mounted in the same place as the thermocouple. And then it comes up, the signal comes up through copper wire which is a lot more reliable and flexible than the thermocouple stuff. Um, yeah definitely worth putting a little LED in the, the build area to see what's happening. I also printed off some little uh, optical brake fingers for the end stops. There's one there for the end stop for the X. The Y's over there and the Z's in behind. Um, Alright, uh, what's next? That might be it. I think of anything else. If uh, anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer or give you my two cents worth. Yeah, not that I know that much, but I'm learning. Cool.